This is Trademark East Africa, growing prosperity through trade. Now, let's talk trade. Technological innovations are helping us experience a better trade environment. The Uganda Revenue Authority is placing seals on containers and is able to track journeys across trade routes. This has helped reduce journey times and also transformed the way goods are cleared across strategic ports and across borders. Uganda has been used as a model. Within one year, we shall experience the only customs cross-border regional tracking system in the entire world. So in this show, we find out how technology helps facilitate trade and its impact on business. My guest today is an expert in customs clearance. He has worked across the board with policymakers, the private sector, and civil society. He is the former Commissioner for Customs, Uganda Revenue Authority, and now Trademark East Africa's Senior Director for an Enhanced Trade Environment, Mr. Richard Kamajugo. So first, why is there so much talk about technology and trade facilitation? Over the years, the volumes of international trade have grown substantially, substantially, all over the world. And if efficiency had to be maintained, things had to be done differently. The days of controls at the borders, without regard to how long it takes, are long gone. And the World Trade Organization and World Customs Organization have recognized technology as that enabler that would help achieve facilitation of trade without, without compromising controls of customs. In what way will the electronic cargo tracking system lead to efficiency in the region? Just like the name suggests, it involves tracking the goods as they move from point A to point B. Taking the example in the region for, uh, that you load a container of goods on a truck in Mombasa, the truck, the container could either be going to Mombasa or to Kampala or to Kigali or wherever. You have this, say, 1,000 kilometer journey. After loading, you all have one point of reference to give you the location or the status of the goods, and this was the driver. With electronic tracking, all the interested parties are able to know the location and the status of the goods at any one time. And in fact, many times are the ones who call the driver and say, you are wasting time here, please get to move. So how do these devices work? These are what we call electronic seals that are placed on the container with a cable that's tied around the locks of the container and communicates through GPS or GPRS, which would be the, the, the telephone mast system, to a central monitoring center. So any deviation from the route, an alert is sent to the monitoring center. Now there is also the top class alert, red alert, tamper, tampering with the seal. That one now takes immediate intervention by the rapid response teams. One of the developments that came, improvements that came with uh, this system is that tracking without capacity to intervene is as good as no tracking at all. So the rapid response teams have navigation equipment which lead them to the very point up to the last detail of where this seal is. So they are able to intervene in real time, get there and get to sort out whatever is going wrong with the consignment. How far has Uganda gone in implementing this system? Uh, Uganda's system was launched, I think that was in May 2013. So it's just above, just, just over two years. And it's worked very well that very good buy-in from the private sector because they have realized the benefits of this system. The government, very happy, substantial, substantial benefits. And we, we saw change in, the, in behavior of the drivers that even without reporting any breakdown, journeys that used to take five days now take one and a half days. Costs. What is the cost involved in implementing the seals and also integrating this further afield? With respect to costs, I think we'll be talking about two sides, the private sector and the government. To start with the private sector, this is one of those strange balance sheets which has no costs but benefit only. So the private sector incurs no costs. For the government, the system took about, cost about five and a half, five and a half million dollars. Government, 
in partnership with the development partners, uh, the World Bank and Trademark East Africa, supported the implementation of this system. That's through buying the equipment, the infrastructure, the central monitoring center, the seals, the, 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 the rapid response capacity, all that took this amount of money. Now, because it's web-based, it doesn't know boundaries. It works easily across boundaries and is being now rolled out to the region, up to Kigali and up to Mombasa. The rollout to Kigali and Mombasa is likely to cost, say, another about $5 million. And thereafter, we're proud to say that East Africa will have the first customs cross-border electronic tracking in the world. In the world? In the world. Interesting. Yeah. Now, good about technology. What has customs done to be able to enhance cross-border uh, clearance so that then goods move faster? Now, as the goods move faster, the facilities at the borders where they are handled had also to be improved. Now, the one-stop border posts have been developed. Trademark East Africa has supported 13, 13 uh, one-stop border posts in the region. The processes have been changed. The hours of operation have been changed at all the major border posts. They work 24 hours. To the extent that at Malaba now, about 25% of the goods are cleared between midnight and 6 a.m. So that then you don't have everyone going to sleep and then waking up and all struggling to do clearance together in the morning. So that then you have a smooth flow both day and night. You'll also note that factories now, many factories work 24 hours. They have day shifts and night shifts. So the offtake of raw materials and all other requirements have increased. Now, Retaining 24-hour operations at the borders would stifle the operations of those that are working 24 hours. So in a way, things are getting much faster. That reduces congestion and improves the processes. We have all agencies seated together under one roof. We have cross-border agencies sitting together so that stopping at one point to do a process cross to the other border, repeat the same process, now that should be something of the past. So Richard, why do you think East Africa will be the first to implement a regional customs tracking system, the first of its kind in the world? East Africa formed a customs union about 10 years ago. Under that framework, the customs law is the same throughout the region. So the same law, same regulations, same procedures that are not hampered by different national laws where they existed. So it's very easy to implement regional frameworks without being limited by the national, uh, national legislations. On top of that, East Africa has enjoyed very high political support, very high political buy-in of the initiatives, to the extent that under the Northern Corridor Initiative, the heads of state meet every two months to monitor progress of implementation of the different key initiatives that have been identified as major drivers of development. And ease of movement of goods is one of those initiatives. So it's really built momentum and sustained the same momentum towards improvement in this area. That was an edition of Let's Talk Trade. For more information on any of the topics being discussed on the show, visit our website www.trademarkea.com.